ocean because I see the face of things to come. Hi, Krista. Hi, Jamson. How's it Thank going? Nasty you. woman, what's your shirt? You gave this to me. I love it. Nasty woman. <laughs> you sent me this article that you wrote. And I had to say it's a really beautiful, touching article, and it's so right on. So Krista, you wrote this incredible article um, that I just read this morning about um, some really intense things that happened to you in college and your thought processes on um, women's silence. And um, so I wanted to ask you some questions about that. And maybe, maybe you can share something about your journey, you know, that you never called it rape, you never spoke up, you never told anyone, very few people, a traumatic experience in college and, and you didn't share it, which happens to so many of us. But then now, 30 years later, you're kind of rethinking that, you know, is that the right thing? This is silence. Does the silence just promote more of the same? And you shared the story of your, your niece and um, worrying about your own daughter, that nothing's changed. So can you talk a little bit about that? Thanks for the compliment. It's always, you're such a gifted writer. So for you to say that I read something good is so meaningful to me. Oh, it's a really good article. It's a very good article. I didn't say anything for many of the same reasons that women stay silent about these things today. People who have experienced sexual assault will resonate with what I'm about to say. You just want to shove it aside, move on, pull your big girl panties back up, and go out in the world and survive. Um, and the trouble with that is that um, someone likened it to trying to run a marathon with a broken ankle. You've got to heal the trauma. It's hard to do that when it's uh, so uncomfortable for other people to talk about it. You often feel like, like well, it's misunderstood, um, not believable. Um, you sort of have all these questions to ask yourself about it. I was very, very confused. Um, you know, a big percentage of sexual assaults are committed by someone that a woman or um, a person knows intimately, and um, it's messy. It's just something that is difficult to talk about, but the trauma is the same, I believe, for everybody. I believe the trauma is very real, and we have to heal that trauma. I don't think that we're going to get very far with getting women forward and helping them um, recover from these things and getting our society to a healthy place if we don't talk about this. You, you can't fix your car without looking under the hood. I, I love that quote. You quoted uh, Chanel Miller. Um, that's an intense quote. Let's see if I can read it. Uh, you, you write, being sexually assaulted means rearranging everything you knew about your personal safety and vulnerability. It is traumatic. Chanel Miller describes the aftermath as something slipping out of you. Where did I go? What was taken? It is terror swallowed inside silence and unclipping from the world where up was up and down was down. This moment is not pain, not hysteria, not crying. It is your insides turning to cold stones. It is utter confusion paired with knowing. Wow. I, I give her so much applause for how she wrote this book. That just struck me very deeply. So what's the title of that book? Know my name. If, if our listeners don't know who Chanel Miller is, um, nobody knew who she was for a very long time. She was known as Emily Doe from Stanford. I, I choose not to give him any credit here. I choose not to say his name. How about that? Um, um, it's got a minimal sentence, about six months. I believe this, this book is going to do something for our culture. I really do. It, it's a historic book on a really tough topic. And I think a lot of us are going to read it and say, oh, wow something that we really need to pay attention to. You had stayed silent and now you are seeing all these other women speak out, you know, Me Too, and you talk about the domino effect of how, like with, with Me Too, none of those women wanted to come on the record. And so many of them said, well, I will if another woman does. But until you get that critical mass, you can't do anything. And then the dominoes fell and then the whole thing flipped. So that was really interesting to me as like a crowd phenomena. I mean, talk about collective intelligence flipping um, the whole system. Absolutely. I think there's a great deal of power here. I think we have a lot to contribute. And I think that 
um, the more that we talk about solutions to these problems, um, the more we'll navigate our way through it. Right now we're in a really messy time and still people don't want to talk about this and I get it. I mean, I lived a really long time not talking about it. I just got to the age where I give way less Fs. <laughs> fact close to zero x what anybody else thinks and that's you know it's it's really unfair of me to ask other women to come forward and say anything without admitting that i um i had to get to a place where i just don't think about you know just wow it's a reality um whenever you share anything painful with someone whether it's your mother or your best friend or a stranger as women, we're aware of how that other person takes that information. We're very aware of how they feel. And um, I find myself taking care of the other person more often than not, and just not wanting to do that at all. That's a lot of, a lot of why I say it's not, you know, and then there are countless other reasons why people don't do things. But talking about it is big, and it does make a difference. And we've seen since um, Megan Tooby and jo Jody Cantor's book, She Said, came out. This is the behind the scenes story of their investigative reporting. It's brilliantly written, and I, and I highly recommend it, um, about the journey that they went on before they broke the story and how nervous they were to break it. Because like just hours before they hit publish on it, they only had one person. They got another. And then once it was published, they got tons and tons of calls. Um, so that's the power of community. That's the power of collaboration. Their problem was that these women that uh, came forward didn't know about each other. Right. And by the nature of their reporting, they couldn't share that information because they were protecting their sources. But there was another huge big piece to that, and that was the legal system and in corporate America that were um, enabling this to continue and go on. Um, I saw that in your article, you had written about uh, non-disclosures and how, you know, if there's sexual harassment, a lot of times employees are, are, for, are you know, settle and that there's a non-disclosure involved in that. And so no one will ever know. There was one source that um, finally came forward um, and she didn't tell her husband this happened to her in her early 20s, maybe she was 20. Um, she signed an agreement that she was not allowed to talk about this with any man ever, any. And that means she can't report the crime, which um, she can't get support for this because she's experienced a trauma, yet she can't talk about it. She has to live with it in silence. And no, none of her colleagues, none of her friends, nobody will know, which enables the perpetrator. And as a young woman, she needed money and that she lost a job in it, right? So she's just trying to move on with her life. California, at least, has um, initiated some movement in um, eliminating non-disclosure clauses in sexual assault settlements. It's a huge step in, in the right direction. So our voices matter. Yeah. All that to say, it matters when we talk about it. It matters when we identify the problem and, and discuss what's wrong. We can't fix it if we don't know what's wrong. The craziest part about this book in particular, I'm gonna just grab it because it's right here. Oh yeah. I wish it was that much It's really important to speak. But I, I, like I said before, um, I understand why people don't. 100%. You're healing from a trauma that's much the same as many other people's trauma. Once you once you figure that out and you realize that you're not alone and you do have support, it's a whole different body. Right. A whole different deal. So I, I want to offer a safe space for people to come on this show and talk about these things. And I want to make it clear that I don't want it to be about pointing the finger or saying... Um, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong with our society, because this um, is really about raising our collective intelligence, which means that we want to find solutions. So there's a couple really exciting things that I discovered. One just happened this morning, and you discovered it too with the uh, LA Metro. Oh, but yeah. uh, the Grey's Anatomy episode, I was so pleased to see this article. It was a little bit old, but there was an episode um, called Silent All These Years, 
based on Kim Lazy Ford's testimony. And it was about a Grey's Anatomy episode about a woman who came forward years later. And at the end of that episode, Ellen Pompeo, the star of the show, did a public service announcement um, and gave uh, this organization called Rape and Incest National Network. The acronym is RAIN, R-A-I-N-N. Because what happened when she did that was uh, RAIN got an increase in calls over the next 48 hours, over 40%. And so the Google searches for RAIN itself increased by 41%. It just goes to show what well, what kind of volume could be raised with just one vote? It's well, pretty exciting. Sort of touched on before we started recording the idea of upstanding. I love that. So coming back to the um, the Metro article in LA, they were saying you know a lot of women are not don't feel safe taking the Metro. For it's, it's pretty intense when you read the comments on there. We were talking this morning about uh, instead of uh, bystanders, we need upstanders, people to stand up for us. We talked about it before about the problem orienting you to the potential to do something bigger and better. And, and I think uh, there's something in there. This article, they, um, and this one woman says, her name is Genesis Renberg. I avoid public transportation entirely. I have been traumatized by my experience riding as a woman due to sexual harassment, unwanted advances, and threatening situations. Um, eight years ago, I was 19 and waiting for a bus after work at a busy intersection in Canada Park, and that is a busy place. A man rode up on a bicycle and sexually assaulted me by putting his hands up my dress and doing what he wanted, no one helped stopped him or even seemed to notice and then he fled. Another time that same year, a man sitting next to me picked a racial fight with an unwilling man. He flashed a gun and four or so men pushed him out of the doors of the bus at the next stop. What that says to me is that we just need to let everyone know that this is behavior that's unwanted, traumatizing, traumatizing, um, it's illegal, it's a violent crime, and it needs to be treated that way. Well, not only that, but those, you know, those guys helped, you know, helped everyone on the bus in that situation because they perceived it as a collective safety issue. Like a threat because there was a gun in the bus. Right, but a woman having something happen to her, well, we can ignore that and it'll go away. You know, you don't People might think they know each other. What do we know? We don't know the story. We don't yeah. know the story. Yeah. But the but the truth is that 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 man who was um, verbally attacked on the bus walked away feeling vindicated, knowing that something wrong happened on that bus. It's yeah. a huge piece he had of it. his back, and yeah, he came away with a positive it was validated that that was wrong, not okay, and that other people are willing to step in on his behalf. Right. And that says so much. That right. says so and, much. And the difference is, you know, that she had to internalize it, and he didn't. Um, and, but again, like orienting to the potential, why, there's no reason why we can't make a, a, that kind of crime equal in people's minds. Um, and going through that collective thing, you know, it, sh there she is. Now she no longer takes public transportation. Now she's not supporting, you know, a collective resource. Now she's not contributing her voice to that collective resource. So society suffers. It is a collective assault. It is. And we need to see it as that. You're absolutely right, Timson. Now Metro is looking into a bystander pool. So oh, while I prefer to call it an upstander program, they can call it by whatever it is. I am here to say that there's a huge amount of power in coming right out and saying, yes, I survived rape. I'm a rape survivor. What? What about it? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not rape. I'm not just, you know, being assaulted. I'm a whole person. What do you want to know? And I'm not ashamed of it. 
talk to me about it. But if I, <laughs> I go about this, you know, you know me, I have this saying, well, that sounds like a personal problem. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I take to this. If people are uncomfortable about it, that's not my problem. Yeah. They can look at why they're uncomfortable. Well, this has been an amazing discussion. Yes, it has. It's, and there's, there's movement. Um, we're seeing a lot of movement on the Bonobo Revolution front. I'm super excited about our media following. It's building. People seem yes. excited. We've got the Women's March coming up. Yes, and if you like what we're talking about, folks, we want to invite you to follow us on social media at 100%. Um, at Bonobo Revolt. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. First of all, we want to encourage people to submit names for the naming contest for our three Bonobo babes. And we are going to host an event right before the Women's March on January 18th in San Diego. We will both be in San Diego with our shirts, and we want to grab a huge following of Bonobo revolutionaries to come march with us. Um, I think that it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm excited about it. I hope we get a big showing, and I hope that um, if you can't join us in San Diego, but you do decide to go someplace else, that you post your photos oh, and tag us. Yes, yes. Let's have a Bonobo revolution. Let's show these women out in the streets, raising hell. Right, let's raise some hell together. Raise we need everybody, and we can do this together. The revolution is here. The revolution is here, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right well thank you krista this has been great thank you tamson it's always great okay thank bye you. for now bye for now revolution because i see the face of things to come